All right, YouTube, we are back with state park number 13 this week, McConnell's Mill State Park. It's gonna be a good one. We've got old mills, covered bridges, hiking trails. What more can you ask for? So uh, let's go tackle the Kildu Trail, learn a thing or two, and uh, see some cool sights along the way. Let's go. And welcome back to this week's adventure. I'm here at McConnell's Mill State Park in Lawrence County, Pennsylvania for my state park number 13. If you're new to this channel, I'm trying to go to each and every Pennsylvania state park within the next couple years. And this happens to be lucky number 13. McConnell's Mill is known for uh, some unique name locations like Hell's Hollow, the old mill here in front of me supposedly haunted if you're uh, into those kind of things. The Kildu Trail and uh, Breakneck Bridge, just to name a few. And it seems like uh, every year, one or two people end up going missing here, either from rock climbing, drowning, or just uh, random disappearances. So I figure what better place to check out for my 13th state park. Just over the, the hillside here, you get a view of one of uh, the only covered bridges here in Lawrence County, built in 1874. We'll be taking a look at that in a little bit. So in just a minute, we're gonna be heading down that way and linking up with the Kildu Trail. I seem like I uh, end up at this park every single year and hike the Kildu Trail. It is three miles round trip. We're gonna hike up Slippery Rock Creek here that you can see right over this uh, ledge. And we'll link up with a bridge known as Eckert Bridge in a mile and a half down that way. And eventually we will be on the other side of the of the creek here and come across the bridge and that will be the day. So, uh...
All right, well, before we hit the Kildu Trail, here's a little look at Slippery Rock Creek, the calmness of Slippery Rock Creek, before it heads on over this old dam here and becomes a little rougher on downstream as it continues down underneath the old covered bridge built in 1874. And here is a good look at the old mill built all the way back in 1852 by a man named Daniel Kennedy. This mill lasted 16 years until eventually it burnt down. It was quickly rebuilt and eventually in 1875, Thomas McConnell ended up purchasing this dam. And uh, that's pretty much how this park got its name. So Thomas McConnell purchased the dam off of Mr. Kennedy and turned this mill into one of the first rolling mills in the country. So people would have came from all over this area. They would have brought their corn, wheat, oats, all from out uh, local farms. And McConnell's would have ground it up and shipped it probably all around this area as well probably down to Pittsburgh but if you can imagine back in the 1800s horse and carriages and and whatnot would have came across this bridge local farmers probably with uh, all their corn all their harvest and brought it up to the mill here for it to be ground up so a lot of history here Well, spring is officially coming to an end here in Pennsylvania. It is June 18th, a couple days away from summer. But today we are having some rare weather. It's almost like fall out here. Whenever I got out of the truck, it was a uh, balmy 58 degrees. So honestly, perfect hiking weather to get out on the trail today. So today's goals are gonna be doing a little herping, hopefully finding Maybe a salamander or two. Maybe we'll get lucky and uh, run into a snake. And we'll also be looking for some different varieties of wildflower today. This trail does have a few waterfalls on it. Kildew Falls, as well as Breakneck Falls, I believe it's called. Little idea of what uh, I want to see and do today along the Kildew Trail. All right, well, there's no signs for it, except for this number eight. It doesn't really tell you much. But right off the trail here, maybe about 100 yards uphill, I believe we've arrived at Kildew Falls. So we're gonna do a little off trail exploring here and see if we can get up and close and personal with a pretty decent sized waterfall. I think it's about 20 to 30 feet high, so Let's go see if we get a little closer to it here. All right, well, a short little jog up a hill off the trail. 
and we have arrived here at what I believe is Kildu Falls. Looks to be about 20 feet tall. Water flow is not that bad considering it's been uh, 90 degrees here in Western PA pretty much all week. But yeah, I don't think a lot of people realize this is even up here. So if you do the Kildu Trail, keep an eye uphill and uh, you'll eventually run into this. A little bit difficult to get to. It is pretty steep getting up here, but cool nonetheless. So we're going to head back on down to the trail and keep trucking on down to Eckert Bridge. All right, well, I decided to take a little breather here along the creek, but I was reading a little bit about the history on this area. And millions and millions of years ago, believe it or not, where I'm standing would have been a massive inland lake or an inland sea, probably the size of one of the Great Lakes. And eventually uh, the glacier that held it back 
either melted or broke and released hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of, of water. And it all would have kind of flown through this, this gorge here. Hence why all these giant boulders are here. That lake would have pretty much dragged these all the way down from where the lake started and left them strewn all about the land here. So if you were kind of curious about the, the formation of this gorge, that's how it all started. Giant inland lake or a giant inland sea end up flooding out. Dragging all these rocks for miles and miles and miles and miles like these tiny little pebbles and leave them strewn all across this area here. So here's a look at one of the larger boulders along the trail that I've seen. That thing is pretty much the size of a house. An absolute unit of a boulder. But as you can imagine, whenever that lake drained out, this rock would have been just thrown around like a little pebble. Probably traveled for miles and miles and miles until it ultimately found its final resting place here. So, pretty interesting. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this place usually has at least one fatality a year. People get a little reckless, come out here, they see these rocks, and they don't realize how slippery they actually are. So a lot of people will end up jumping out on these rocks, not realizing how slippery they are, end up hitting their head, and then end up down in something like this. Get swept down the creek, never to be seen again, or found weeks later downstream, so. Always be careful on these trails. Always make sure you have the proper, you know, hiking boots and, and whatnot on, but just don't be an idiot and you'll be good. I mean, as you can see here, this rock is extremely dry, but you never know what can happen. This river is fast moving. You don't want to get caught in that, so. Yeah, just a little uh, FYI. All right, well, it's been pretty slim pickings out on the trail today, but I did manage to find, I believe it's another dusky salamander, although he does look a little different than the other ones I've seen up Coosier. Pretty new to this, so I think this is either a dusky or a seal salamander. So yeah, pretty cool look at him. If you know what he is for sure, let me know in the comments. They are a dusky or a seal salamander, I believe. There he is. Found another little guy here. Definitely believe this is a dusky. He is tiny. Probably half the size of the last one we just saw. So yeah, we didn't strike out today. Two salamanders down, two species down. Let's see if we can find some more. Well, herping wasn't a total bust today, at least. Found four little salamanders down in that little uh, rock area. Three were duskies, the other one I'm not sure of. It was either a larger dusky or a sealess salamander, I'm guessing. So I'm gonna keep heading on, see if we can maybe find a couple more. All right, well, I can see Eckert Bridge there in the distance. Looks like there's a group of people on it, but right before Eckert Bridge, there is another, probably about 10 foot waterfall. I'm gonna go up and see if we can get a little close to it here. 
not sure exactly what this one's called. We'll just call this Eckert Falls since we're relatively close to the bridge. So here you have it. Pretty similar to uh, Kildew Falls. Not as large, but there you have it. Another waterfall down for the day. Officially past our uh, halfway point here at Eckerd Bridge. There was a bit of a circus up there. There's probably 20 people on the bridge, a couple motorcyclists, and it looks like a couple people that are involved in emergency rescue out here training. So yeah, tons of people, tons of kayakers out to, out here today. But we are officially heading back towards the mill now. And like I said, that means we're a mile and a half into the trail got another mile and a half left so the sun is officially out starting to warm up so a little quick fun fact about this side of the trail this is actually part of the nct also known as the North Country Trail. If you've never heard of it, it's actually the longest national trail in the United States. And it spans from North Dakota all the way up to New England. So, a little taste of the North Country Trail. I'm sure a lot of people have come through this area and traveled the entire trail. But yeah, just imagine walking from North Dakota all the way up to uh, New England, so. All right, well, we're gonna be wrapping up this trail here in just a few minutes as we make it back to the covered bridge. But I did wanna to touch on a couple facts that I didn't get to uh, state yet in the video. So the state park was established back in 1957, making it one of the newer parks here in Pennsylvania. 
it's uh, a little bit over 2,500 acres. Pretty decent size. Obviously located in Lawrence County. It's Lawrence County's only state park. And Lawrence County has two covered bridges, one of which is the one that we've seen earlier. So as we make it back to the covered bridge, I'll show you what else I see. And we'll talk a little bit about the covered bridge once I get there. So McConnell's Mill, a little taste of it. The Kildew Trail that I hiked today is three miles. So in case you want to do it, it's pretty easy. Not a lot of elevation gain. A little bit of uh, rocky terrain that you have to traverse, but overall, it's a pretty easy trail that pretty much anybody can do, so. Well, we have completed the Kildew Trail here. As you see, we're coming up onto the road here on the other side of the covered bridge. So, as soon as we get to the other side of the covered bridge, it's gonna be mission accomplished for the day. Conquered the Kildew Trail, our 13th state park in my state park series. So let's go through the covered bridge, check it out. All right, heading into the covered bridge here at McConnell's Mill. This is McConnell's built Mill covered bridge. Not a really a big covered bridge guy, but uh, this bridge is known for its specific truss system known as the Howe truss system. I'm guessing it has something to do with these X's all throughout the covered bridge. So I'll show you a picture of what some other covered bridges look like, but this is known for its Howe truss system. So here you have it built in 1874. Right, guys that's gonna wrap up mcconnell's mill state park my 13th state park in the state park series i'm sure you guys are tired of me saying that in this video we did the Kildew trail today three miles pretty much the whole family could do that trail little elevation gain some uh rocky terrain but very easy very fun trail to do around three miles we got lucky and saw four different salamanders today. I believe three of them were dusky. Is not too sure about the fourth one. It was either a seal salamander or a larger dusky. Wildflowers were kind of a bust today. We saw two different variants of those. But overall, a great end to the spring. My next video, it will officially be the summertime and probably a lot hotter than today. Right now it's only 60 degrees. Couldn't ask for a better day. It feels like a nice fall day out here. So that's going to wrap it up. As always, if you aren't already, please hit that subscribe button. I think like 92% of my viewers right now aren't subscribed. So it takes two seconds. It's free. Hit that, uh, that red icon, that red button. Leave me a comment. Leave, uh, let me know what your favorite state park is or where I should go next. Like the video. Check me out on uh, Instagram and Facebook for little sneak peeks of videos coming up in the future. All right, guys. Peace.